Hello again guys, it's Mike Kinkora here bringing you another vintage computer review. This is a Packard Bell Multimedia L197 from July of 1997. It's a bit of a weird machine because late in Packard Bell's history, they joined up with a company called NEC to produce kind of bland generic machines. And I believe this is one of those machines. This machine seems to be designed as more of a business machine than a consumer PC because of the fact that it has a sleep button on the front and power button on the back but also because of the fact that it is a really thin machine, which means that it's not going to have much in the way of expandability. And if we look around the back, it actually doesn't even have any slots for expandability, which is reflected on the motherboard because there is no slots on the motherboard for expansion. Taking a closer look at the spec sheet here, we can see that it came with a 200 megahertz Intel Pentium processor with 16 kilobytes of internal cache which is a little bit strange because up to this point Packard Bell machines omitted cache entirely making them pretty much useless for 3D gaming. It had a 2.1 gigabyte hard disk drive although this has been replaced with a Seagate of the 2 gigabyte variety. It's a little bit slower than what would have normally been in there though I think. It comes with 16 megabytes of EDO RAM that's a 72 pin SIM variety, uh, an internal modem that is 3.36 kilobytes but that is pretty much useless information these days. It is made by Aztec though, the same guys who generally make the modems and uh, sound chips for Packard Bell computers. So it is not a complete deviation from Packard Bell's lineup. It came with an original Packard Bell 16 speed CD drive although that has been replaced as you probably saw with a Memorex 48 speed drive. It has internal 3.5 inch floppy disk, and it comes with a variety of ports, including USB, which is not listed on here. Its graphics is a 64-bit ATI Graphics Pro Turbo PC, that is the ATI M64-VT chip, and it is integrated right onto the motherboard, outputting VGA, up to a resolution of 1280 by 1024 Of course, that depends on your monitor, as they designate right here. The sound chip in this thing is 16-bit integrated stereo sound, which means it is a Sound Blaster compatible chip. That too is manufactured by Aztec. It is the 2320 chip, in case anybody needs to look that up. Fortunately, the drivers for that come default with Windows 98, so basically all you have to do is reinstall Windows on this thing and you're golden. Taking a closer look at the back here, we can see that the power supply is actually integrated right into the system, which is a bit of a pain in case that ever blows up you are pretty much left with a doorstop. Here we can see the date code and the general information sticker for the model number, etc. And if we go to the right of that, we can actually take a look at the motherboard here. It's laid out in a line similar to a lot of uh, computers from this era, much like the LPX format, but it is a lot smaller and not in a very standard way. As you can see, it has one load gate port up here. You have your VGA, one USB, mouse and keyboard, parallel port for printers and whatnot, your sound and serial right here for whatever devices you need that for. Your modem is actually right here and rides on a card right above the sound chip which is down here somewhere on the motherboard as I will show later when I crack this open. Okay so now that we've got the screws out here we can go ahead and just slide this piece back and it'll just come off and we can access the insides easily. Put a little force on it, and bam, there we go. Okay guys, so I've decided to go mobile here to show you the inside in greater detail. And the first thing I'd like to point out is this non-standard AT power supply, integrated right into the chassis. If you look underneath here, you can see that that power lead only goes to one connector on the board, which is pretty atypical for AT style power supplies and motherboards. Um, so if you are rebuilding this power supply or replacing it with something out of another case, then I would definitely check to make sure those voltages comply. Not sure how you'd find that information, but uh, good luck with that. Next to that we have our modem, and that is made by Aztec, as I said before. That can be easily removed with these two brackets connected to two screws on the other side here, and it just pops right out. It uses a little pin connector right there to connect to the motherboard which isn't a problem it just it slides right up it's nice and easy underneath that we have our sound chip which is also Aztec and has OPL right on the chip which gives us nice FM synthesis and I always approve of that this long ribbon cable you see here goes all the way to the front to this board which gives us microphone and headphone out 
The other jack is on the back, as I said before. This other ribbon here gives us game port, and below that we have our graphics card chip integrated into the motherboard. Our VGA is right there. Socket 7 CPU, that's a 200 megahertz jobber. And then our cache stash is right there. And our RAM is right there. Two sockets for uh, EDU 72, <laughs> EDO, I mean, 72 pin SIM RAM. Now we have our CD-ROM bay right here, which is 5.25 half height, obviously. And uh, this is not the original CD-ROM drive. This is a Memorex of 48 speed, as I said before. And this is also not the right hard drive. This is a 2 gigabyte Seagate. It should have come with a Maxtor that is 2.1 gigabyte. And I believe that is also a slower hard drive, which is sort of problematic, as you'll see when I fire it up, which I will do right now. Okay, so as you can see, I've got it all put together here with a nice monitor and everything. It's a, it's a nice looking PC. It really is a really nice desktop machine. CD-ROM's a little bit low for my taste because it opens up. It kind of hits your keyboard or whatever's in front of it. But other than that, it, it's really nice. There is one more thing I forgot to mention, though, and that's the CMOS. As you can see here, it is, it's not really a CR2032. It's something slightly smaller. And I'm not sure what size that is. I couldn't really get in there to look. But you can see that it's not socketed. And you can't, like, pop a new battery in there. It's soldered right onto an arm. And removing these are a big pain in the butt. So I didn't. I just left it as it was. And you'll see it'll yell at me when I start up. But that's fine. We can get past that. We can get into Windows and um, try some games. And so let's go ahead and power it up and show you what it looks like. Okay, as you saw, it yelled at me. And we'll go past that. That hard drive is just so loud. It's just, <laughs> it's got to be dying or just really old. Okay, guys, so I've gone ahead and focused the camera on the monitor here so you can kind of see what's going on. And I've also uh, thrown a blanket over one of the windows so it's a little bit darker. So hopefully you will not see my reflection in the glass here. This is a curved screen CRT though. And I just wanted to use that because it, it gives it more of a uh, the authentic feel instead of using an LCD. So uh, please forgive me that. The first game I'd like to show off here is uh, Rise of the Triad. Because I want to demo what the sound card actually sounds like. And uh, there really is no better game for that than Rise of the Triad because the um, music is just really kick-ass in this video game. So let's go ahead and do that and start a game here so I can show you what the music is like. And already you can hear it's pretty cool. The sound card doesn't sound bad. It's pretty average for um, Aztec sound cards. Oh, didn't get him. Got away. Bam, got him. Did I get them all? No, oh, no, there he is. I knew there was one more. But yeah, as you can hear already, it sounds pretty good uh, for a regular Sound Blaster clone. Where is he? Oh, he got hit by that thing. Oh. Damn, I was trying to get him to bag. Please, no, don't shoot. Yeah, I take that. So yeah, music in this game, freaking amazing. Anytime I want to test the sound card, this is what I'm going to use. <laughs> Boom. I love how fast-paced this game is, too. It's, it's really cool. If you've never played this game, totally go out and, like, try it. Don't buy it, because it costs, like, a billion dollars on eBay these days. 
but uh, go ahead and try it because it is it's really cool. It is such a cool game. Seriously though, box copies of this game, so expensive. So expensive. Ooh, that doesn't sound quite right. That high pitch. No, doesn't sound quite right. It's slightly off. Oh! Yeah, right there. I don't know if you hear that, but holy crap, that's not right. <laughs> that is not even slightly right. Ah, burn. Get them all? Yeah. So yeah, not a super uh, great card. Definitely good enough. Okay, so this game is Seven Kingdoms. It's a game that is an RTS published by iMagic and is relatively unknown. I got to play the demo in the 90s uh, back when I owned, well, back when I first played Vangers, which is another game nobody really knows of, but I really love. And this game is pretty unique. It's really kind of strange uh, in the way that you play because, oh, I've already entered my name and everything. <laughs> Because you don't really like build units and stuff the same way. You have to capture villages and stuff. It's a weird mix of like civilization and some other stuff. And I really like the music here. Let me put it on the one I want here. This one. This one played a lot in the demo. <laughs> and I just love it. Ready? Ready? Um, no, that's not what I wanted. Select the location. Oui. No, that's not what I wanted. Oh, I know what I was doing now. I wanted to train a guy for construction. Okay. <laughs> I may have forgot how to play it a little bit. Ready, ready, ready. Okay, so this is my construction guy. We can go ahead and... Oh, wrong thing. Tell him to build a mine on this resource. And this is clay here. So we can then manufacture things with that clay and trade with other civilizations and get more money as... Ready, ready, ready. Ready? One more. Ready. Ready? Now these guys are going to sit in the fort, and the longer they sit in the fort, the higher their level goes here. And the higher the level goes, the tougher they are. And obviously this is me, I'm the king, sitting in the fort here. There are other villages scattered all around, and these are bad guy things. They are layers for monsters, and if you defeat them, you get higher standing with the civilizations around. And I think we want this village right here because of this right there, natural resource iron. In fact, let's go do that right now. Let's go claim that. This guy. Uh, I better finish doing this first. Market. Uh... Actually, that's not a bad idea. Capture both of these. See, these two are really close together. And while there are none of my people in here, because you can influence the standing of these people, and someone just put, proposed to trade with me. They're going to contact a village, or contact, I mean, conquer. Uh, where's he going? Chop on that, maybe. Hmm. But anyway, um, so you can influence the standing of other villages and take them over uh, that way. Like cultural influence. Building complete. Ready? There we go. Ready? We we'll do that. Oh no! Oh, that isn't what I wanted to do actually. I don't know. Ready? I built that in the wrong spot. Oh, wrong thing again. Cancel. Factory. Okay, but by building things near your town here, they gather citizens to work here and they become higher levels in mining in this case, or factory workers, or things like that. Obviously, I need to step up my game here and get some guys over here to take this. Or maybe out here. That might be a better idea, although I have clay already. I gotta think about that. But it's a pretty cool game. It's really weird. It's it's pretty unique. Thank you. Yeah,
Oui, mon commandant. Oui, mon commandant. <rire> Well, nothing punk ass little bliarmish. Oui, oui, mon commandant. Oui, mon commandant. À mon fort, mon commandant. Oh, non, mon commandant. I'm taking this one. À mon fort. Hopefully, my guys won't get their butts kicked. No, it looks like I'm winning. So, we will take oui, this village commandant. here. It will become my village. Yay, and I win, Zuz. We can build a fort outside of it. Oh, uh, no. Oui, mon commandant. Yeah, well, that wasn't supposed to happen. Oui, mon commandant. Oui, mon commandant. Isn't quite what I thought would happen. Hmm. What if I attack these guys? Never done this before. Cool. Okay, I've never done that before, so that's something new. And to show off the compatibility with older DOS games, I'm of course going to load up Earth 2140 because that game is notoriously hard to get working on a lot of systems if it's not 100% Sound Blaster compatible. Just to show it works here, let's go ahead and start it up. And there it is. Earth 2140. Works perfectly. Including CD audio. And it runs really fast, too. I was running it in 800 by 600 mode before, and it, it runs a little laggy like that. But uh, in this mode, 640 by 480, it is perfectly smooth and playable. Probably one of my favorite RTS games of all times, so gotta say. It's, it's a good game to pick up and start playing anytime. Fairly cheap too if you can find it. Don't recommend the Steam version though, stay away from that. Alright, so that is a look at the Packard Bell Multimedia L197. An interesting little machine from 1997. Certainly not a bad one by any measurement. And uh, I really kind of enjoy this. It's a nice looking machine. It has a couple of quirks and that CMOS battery is definitely annoying. But who knows, maybe I'll fix that and then it'll be perfectly fine. So, I mean, literally, if I solder in a regular one, then it is a perfectly good machine. There's one more thing about this system, and that's that you have to manually turn it off when you're done. As you might have guessed, because of the switch on the back. Let's go ahead and do that. Windows log off sound. Gotta love that. <laughs> Hmm. 
There we go. It is now safe to turn off your computer. And that's it for this video. Thank you for watching. I'm Mad King Corduroy, and this has been Transcendental Airwaves.